I'm just pressing record. It's all out of focus. Come on. <laughs> Technology, eh? Yeah. <laughs> right. Maybe more down to the user. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. But we better see you this time. So see what you look like. Let's set this as well. Okay. Wait. Excellent. I'll try to look straight at the camera. <laughs> what? Well, yeah, you don't have to. I mean, it's, it's annoying that way, but yeah. At least the sound is better, which yeah. I think is yeah. more important. Yeah. I think. Can you see me clearly there, or is it too, it's not too dark, is it? No. No, the video camera should be able to see you. And I can, oh, yeah, okay. I can see you. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. I just saw you I just saw you put up a video there recently as well. I haven't watched it yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> I do mention you in it. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well I, I sort of um yeah, I, I probably had a little bit of a dig at you, not too long. And it yeah. was just about the well, I'm sure we'll get into it. But it's yeah, okay, about, cool. <clears throat> I feel like there's a desire in you to go all intellectual. Yes. And, and, and in a sense, sometimes rather than um, sort of, hit, you know, go to the point on something, yeah. you might want to go off somewhere and get sort of intellectual about it. Yeah, I understand that. The way, the way I, I look at that is, you know, when you're... As, that I need to be intellectual in order to communicate how I'm feeling and what as best I can. Um, so it's only when I'd be talking to someone else that I would be intellectualizing on it. Otherwise, I'd be just just feeling it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Of course. And if someone asked me how am I, you know, I might tend to lie. I'd say, oh, I'm fine, you know, but you know, really, <laughs> really not, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, but I. I Let's say on unless Wednesday. Uh, unless Google has a way to, you know, send feelings to someone, then, you know, I'd be happy to use that instead. <laughs> well, it's never going to happen technologically. Yeah. But it, yeah. it is possible, isn't it? I think it is, yeah. That's, you know, if you were, like, my own thinking is if I was to read a book or then listen to an audio book written by the author or spoken by the author, then you can get it. There's ten times more. Like, I can't even measure it, how much more you can get from an audio book than, than you can just from a text if you were to read it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there might be, there might be something, that's recorded on the digital on the media as well as just the voice. But even on a deeper level than that, yeah. anything you feel about someone, it will get to them. Oh yes, yeah, so I yeah. They yeah. might not be very open to it. Yeah. And it might take them a while, you know, but there is that communication between anyone and everyone. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't need Google to invent it. <laughs> no, I'm not sitting here thinking ill of you like. <laughs> no, no, well and if, and, if, and if you were, if you yeah. were deep down, you know, that would come across anyway. But it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's interesting, I had a dream, and I don't definitely know it was you, but I think it was you. And I think I was waiting in your pad and looking at some pictures on the wall. And then somebody came in who I think may have been you. And I went to shake your hand and I had this massive glove on. And I thought, well, that's not very polite. I'll take the glove off. <laughs> and then I had another glove underneath that one you know and I, and I just shook your hand because there was another glove there I mean but that, that was quite strange I thought yeah. and I'm not quite sure what to make of it yet yeah you know whether it's I should treat you with kid gloves or whether I should um you know keep a distance you know or in... <laughs> well, was it an oven mitt or a glove you know well the first one was like a massive mitten yeah. And and then when that one came off there was like a, it was a it was like a leathery glove but with fluff. Like a proper winter glove still. 
Yeah. But it, it could have been kid leather. I, <laughs> like a welding glove or something. <laughs> no, no, no. It was definitely sort of natural natural um, material. Yeah. Um, whereas the, the first glove, the big one, was like a cotton, again, with fluff on the inside. So they were, these were some hefty gloves. <laughs> Yeah, oh. I'd say there's thousands of ways to, 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 to look or decode, you know, but, um, yeah, that's interesting that, yeah, I always, I always thought of, you know, you know, just dreams being whatever's going on or whatever's going on in our minds consciously from whatever, a couple of days before we have those dreams and otherwise then we wouldn't remember, you know, when we're asleep in the sleep state, um, so, I think any time you, we might have a conversation that we would have, you know, uh, probably have strange dreams afterwards. Mate, yeah, well, you know, just yeah. sort of engaged with you, so I suppose now, you know, because yeah. <coughs> before, <coughs> it, you know, it would have been difficult to recognise you. Yeah. Because I hadn't seen you before. So, yeah. well, I had watched a video of you, I suppose. I just got some crap come up. Oh, it's probably me coughing. <laughs> it's like, it's too loud. <laughs> you got a problem. <laughs> mm. Okay. So, what, well, well, just going over on when, what happened on Wednesday was, you know, I, I you know, you'd said Wednesday and, and stuff. And so I just thought, you know, you saying you had to nip out. Yeah. To me, it sounded like a bit of an excuse, but I don't know, you know, what it was or whatever. Yeah. But I suppose that's what, you know, that's why I came out with a little dig, if you like, in my last video. It's just, because I was getting a bit frustrated in a sense with everyone. Yeah. Like, people who don't believe in God at all, they're lowest on my list, if you like. <laughs> Uh, you know, people who believe in God, but every word of the Bible is literal, and Jesus is God, and you know, can't even conceive that there's a mother God. You know, and then so in a sense, someone like you, who I do feel, you know, you're in a prime position in a sense. In my mind, of being on my wavelength. Yeah. Because you've heard A. J. Miller, you've read the Bible lots. You, know, you seem like a, you're a good guy and and in a sense and that you know and on Wednesday we had you know the arrangement and I suppose I did think I didn't th wasn't like that pissed off it was just probably for about an hour or so before we were supposed to talk yeah it occupied my mind to a point where I couldn't get deep into meditation as usual yeah. So, but in a sense, you saved me some time because that meant that evening I didn't have this to do. I wouldn't have to upload a video, which again would keep me out of that deeper level. Yeah. So it wasn't like an issue for me. It was perhaps even a good thing. You know, yeah. how these things turn out, usually the way God intended them to. So yeah. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. 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 So I was yeah, like, yeah, that's, that's get cool, out of yeah. the way. Okay. Yeah. So right. So the, I mean, I don't know who you know ought to be leading or whether we can just take turns in deciding yeah, okay. what what's to talk about. But um, so you were sort of getting ready some questions. Yeah, I was. Um, I and found you asked, that you asked when me I had to... some questions, they seem, seem to just they seem to just answer themselves. You know, <laughs> just found what, you know, there's something I it took again a bit of getting used to, but you know, I'm kind of used to it now. So I said that. Uh, maybe when I'm as I'm talking to you, that whatever comes up, I can ask you straight out. Cool, you know? cool. Yeah. Okay. So, but imagine um, you're with God, and suddenly hmm. you realise you're with God, yeah. and then you're like, I can ask any question, and then yeah. you know, oh, what to ask? It's like yeah. I'm not saying I'm God or anything, <laughs> but I yeah. might be the one who. Well, I would say I am, the one who is who's got God's word. At the moment, more than anyone. Yeah. That's okay. what I'm claiming. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But you asked um, me to watch that video. Pardon? You asked me to watch a video, which I did. Yeah, that was yeah. Uh, um, 
uh, Marshall. Um, I, I, the video was it was just to to look at. Um, I see what when I saw his video first, I said, "Oh my God, you know that's something that you know I I had been saying a few years ago before I'd even seen that video." Um, how how the spoken word now doesn't really contain anything. It's just way too objective. Um, I can't really remember the context in which what I was thinking when I when I well, recommend the videos because our emails afterwards kind of sorted that out, you know. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Um, but what I could what I what I want to ask you actually is that about the 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 generational sin. Yeah. Is this something that you can you can highlight for people that would otherwise be be ignorant of that in themselves? It'd be like um, you know because of Adam's sin, deciding not to need God. Yeah. That's written in the genes. Yeah. So you just automatically have that preposition, presuspicion. <laughs> what's that bloody word? <laughs> you just have that sort of in your head that it you don't need God. Yeah. So it's so difficult to to peel it off. And like when you get in deep down in meditation, you know these your beliefs and things, they really have a large effect. So yeah. this is one of the things I'm wondering why it was that as soon as I was hearing AJ say God is our mother and father, it was it was hitting me immediately. Yeah. I was taking it on without any delay, if you like. There would be, you know, more to think about afterwards, but I was taking this truth straight in. Yeah. And it seems to me from interacting with others who've heard divine truth that this isn't the same for everyone that that it didn't kind of go in like that yeah i mean i don't know you tell you tell me um i i found that the same you know there there are there are certain people that are listening to him that he's, he's talking directly into their face he's talking about something that even you know, I felt going through certain processes, and there, you know, he might as well be they're, they're like cows looking into bushes. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just it's just not, it's just not getting there. And I think that oh yeah, that's that's probably what it was to do with um those videos um that I that I recommended you watch. No matter how much AJ wants to tell them, he's they're only gonna pick up this objective language. He won't be able to transmit this to them, so um, I th I think there might be a lost cause in the in the method he's doing, you know. Well, I think I some of the language they use is a yeah. bit obscure because they've kind of invented new terms, haven't they? Yeah. So you know, and like yeah, it is. I think the problem is, you know, you say one word, and people can have zillion different beliefs on what, what that one word is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so, yeah, how does the message get across? Yeah. And like when he talks about... Um, he said reading is guessing, didn't he? And I quite like that. Yeah, I, I guess I suppose it is, yeah. yeah. Because you're guessing um, what you think the meaning of the word is. Absolutely, because we, well, as we read, we're trying to formulate the content of the information in our minds. As we read it, rather than waiting till the whole book has been read, and then seeing what the information is as a whole, feeling it as a single entity rather than um, the sum of its parts. You know, so if he, as if he keeps if he if he's yapping on for another. 10 years, they still mightn't be able to get that aha moment or that, you know, that, that, I suppose, what's that computer term that, you know, at the end when you've typed in a whole computer or computer program and you want to, there's a certain word there for Run. compiling, you know, when they're <laughs> okay. compiled, I suppose, for all the information just to see does it work. So while well, everything age is said now, to, I'll just put it all into a feeling and see does it actually work? Is it true? Um, 
Mars, what I want to ask you about this this generational sin. For me, I I, I see. I went through a process about, say, about three times, not the same one, but three separate processes in order to find out about generational sin in myself. Now, I needed to find that out in order to remove it, the, the depression I had for, 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 we say, two decades. And the only thing is, once I, I know, I remember doing the process, and for me it was like, going all the way back to the origin, show me the origin of this, whatever this is, and I choose not to be involved in this belief or false belief. So for me, it was just like, I didn't feel any different until I actually went out and started to re-experience what I was doing from day to day anyway. So for me, it was just hit, hitting a switch and seeing what happens afterwards. I didn't feel any different. It was just almost like a, a soulful decision, which was just like hitting a switch. And I think there might be, if people don't feel different when they hear information, they might think that, that it doesn't work or it can't be true because they don't feel any different. Um, I'm not, um, is that making sense at all? I, I, I don't know. Um, well, I, I, Sort of hoping you were gonna sort of get there. That yeah. the flicking a switch didn't really make. I didn't really get what you were. I mean, like, so so I say, soul for decision. So what soul did anything happen when you were trying to get rid of these generation generational injuries? Did you feel anything in within you? I felt that um, I I felt completely changed. But once I was changed, I couldn't remember. Or I couldn't make myself feel how I felt before. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't it want to see what you I don't think I want to do But it's just to uh, understand how did I feel before? And I think, well, I feel completely different afterwards. And have and, you done uh, this more than once? Or you've done it a few times? Um, that's just it. I've, I've, I, I say I've been, I've been on this, with, if I want to call it a path. So a path of change. For the last, I'd say three, three, just maybe between three and four years. So I have, I have, I try to to sum it up as maybe, maybe three or four times a week. I would, I would um, try to do this, and that's for the last four years. So I have no idea where I've where I've gone or, or how far I've gone from where I was yeah. before I started, you know, feeling the presence of God. You know, um. So there's for, yeah, I think I've gone off track there now again, so. No, okay, and you feel the presence of God? I can, it's, it's, um, I feel it as, I feel it as being in company with myself, but the other self has gone through the next stage. That's how I feel God's present. Not God in his, in, you know, infinite glory, but... Just God as being like the a version of me, but having gone through the next injury, and He's showing me the, what the next injury is. Just the next thing to do. Um, so when I, why when do I you, heard so why ages, do you think that's God? Why do you think that is God, the Creator and everything? I I I I feel I don't need to trust Him. You know, do I you feel need you don't him need or, God. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't, it's like, it's not saying, well, I'll take out my trust tool and measure him to see how trustworthy is he. You it don't is. want to doubt God, in a sense. I, I don't, f yeah, exactly, yeah, I don't feel that there is, there's a pass. I, I don't feel like, can I even muster up any kind of doubt? It just feels perfect, you know, it's, um, and if there, when I, well, I talk about. I can actually start to feel like I'm getting a little emotional now, even talking about it, because if my if my intentions are towards describing that, then I need to feel God in order to to get that information. And when I start to do that, I start to feel emotional. So, um, I think that's a very good indication as well. You know, um, what sort of what sort of emotional like almost feel like you could have a little cry. 
Absolutely, yeah. I can feel it like just building up behind my, you know, behind my eyes and behind my nose. Um, like cry because it's so good. Oh yeah, yeah. Just, just, just crying from just from a beauty, a beauty point of view. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, but what I was, if I like, what I found was recently, um, I wanted to. When I was going through the process of expectations and removing other people's expectations upon me, I just before I went through the process, I looked at saying, thinking, well, if I don't want to go, if I can't, how would I remove these expectations upon me? And said, so, well, the problem is that if I remove other people's expectations of me, the only thing I'm going to feel is my expectations of others. Which is something that you know I thought is oh, I'd be really guilty about that and everything. So I figured that I actually didn't want to. And when I put myself into like a meditative state, the first thing I felt was a hand on my shoulder and an Australian accent <laughs> saying to me, "Mate, you don't want to do this," as in to say, "You actually don't want to do it." And I said, "I don't." And all I could feel was saying, "Look, I'll help you." I'll help you out with this. And whatever whatever this person did, I felt out in my mind it was like, okay, they're just gonna make themselves slightly brighter. And then what I felt was um a muscle kind of a spasm pain behind my eyes, behind my face, and it went down my arms nice and slowly, my hands were shaking. And then my, my feet were shaking. Um, and after about 15 to 20 minutes, it had gone away. And then afterwards, I started to feel the expectations I had on others. And as soon as I acted on those, if I tried to influence someone in some way, so I wouldn't, so I wouldn't feel bad, I, f I was able to catch it as soon as I did it. And to I told the person, said, look, I'm just after doing this. And I didn't want to do it. I know it's lousy, I said. This, what I just did to you was lousy. And I tried to manipulate you. And this is how I tried to do it. And this is what I was looking for out of it. And the person I said that to, she turned around to me and she said, thank you for saying that. And it actually improved our relationship yeah. tenfold. And I was, because I always had a fear, so when you tell someone you did something, you were doing something to them, that they might freak out or, you know, go reach for the nearest hammer and start, you know, belting or something. But for this, the change in the other person was one of happiness and relief that I had lifted this intention from them. And I started to feel like very, very, afterwards I was, just lying in my bed and my stomach was in knots thinking of how sickening it was all these expectations I put on other people and I was deeply sorry for you know doing all these things and I know this this is very very commonplace in the world at the moment everyone's doing it all the time but I was saying you know that does completely does not make it right so but this is something that I would have considered to be a generate generational injury. We're taught how to manipulate others. I don't think so. Right, no. But stop there for a moment because, yeah. you know, first, what colour eyes you got? Blue. Yeah, they are blue. Okay. Have you seen my karma thing? I have. Yeah. Yeah. But um, you know, you're right, and and it's like as soon as you see what you're doing and you you become aware of how you've done this before and yeah you know you feel that you know that it wasn't pleasant you feel that inside of you yeah that that is you basically um allowing this emotion so you are healing your own soul yeah but i wouldn't call that generational injury i would call that something you may have acquired since you were born from yeah. from parents and everything like that but I would say a generational injury you know from ancestors and before is 
hard written in the genes. Yeah. And it would be, it would be, you know, like um, one of the more recent ones is how, you know, how we've broken our children in, the way we break yes. in a horse. Yes. You know, it would be something like that. And then as we go back further, you know, sort of deeper and deeper things. I think actually, you know, the, the sin of Lamech when he took two wives. Yes. And the sin of Cain when he killed his brother. Yeah. And the sin of Adam when he decided he didn't need God. Yeah. I think they'll be the, the big ones. But yes. there's probably been other smaller ones since then. Yeah. Um, so and I think to to want to control people, you know, that's kind of quite a... <clears throat> well, I mean, I, I gave up to trying to do that. And I asked if you had blue eyes, because with blue eyes, you should probably find it much easier to control people. Because they're much more inclined to do what you want them to do, because they're going to feel a lot more love for it. Yeah. And put off doing what you don't, you know, they're going to be put off not doing what you want because of the, the karma they'll feel for it. In, yeah. With my theory of the blue, green and brown eyes. The Mark of Cain thing, do you remember? Yes, I do, yeah, yeah. Do you remember you were speaking about uh, the brown eyes? The green, it's the brown, green so, and the blue eyes. So the brown would be the, the first, the original ones, if you yeah. like, righteous with the land. And then the mark of Cain is green eyes. And when it said, you know, the plants won't, you won't get the wealth from the ground. That yeah. was the curse. But the blessing was, if anyone hurts you, they will be avenged sevenfold. Yeah. And then Lamech took two wives. And it, all it says is if, well, if Cain will be avenged sevenfold, I'll be avenged seven sevenfold. Yeah. It must be pretty high at this stage. <laughs> well, and then I then I had this theory that, you know, the line of Seth were a bit peeved at this, thinking yep. he's done wrong and, uh, you know, he's acting like a king. He doesn't have to grow anything and however it would have been. And that they tried to commit a sin even bigger yep. to get a 777, you know, and what, <laughs> what would that have been? Pink eyes or something. I who knows, but... God wasn't going that far. God had just. <laughs> Is it? Would it be possible to, with that information, to change the color of your own eyes? I th I think I think it is, and I've seen people go from blue to green. And I think I've seen people go from brown to blue even. Yeah. Um, mine are currently between green and brown, and I want them to go brown. And I, I kind of, because I was actually born with blue eyes. I had blue eyes for a full over a year. It was a bit weird, yep. and they, because that's not normal. And then they went brown. So when I was over a year old, they went brown. Yeah. And then by the time I can remember seeing my own eyes, so that I've just been told, and pictures, but when I could see my own eyes, they were green and brown. And I remember thinking, oh, they'll probably go blue again yeah but they didn't they stayed like this but i went i when i went to live in norway they went brown again and uh, that was when i was in my early 20s but the the greens okay. the greens come back in since coming back to england <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh yeah so hmm. but i want them to be brown i think eventually all eyes will have to be brown because yeah. imagine if, if this is true, if you've got a world with only blue-eyed people, you know, you're really going to struggle growing food. Yeah. And I wonder if this is one of the reasons, if the elite, you know, Illuminati or whoever, some sect who are in control, know all the truths. Yeah. And, and that's why partly immigration gets some brown-eyed people in your country, because the crops keep getting blight and failing and you know we were having mad cow's disease in England and 
blue tongue. <laughs> Maybe they thought it's time yeah. to import a load of brown eyes in. Yeah. Well, and yeah. in Norway, they traditionally you see all the blue eyes from Norway. They never used to have to farm. Really, yeah. there were they, there wasn't really much farmland. There was a bit, but even well, even they had slaves in those days as well. People yeah. they had captured, and they may well have been brown eyed. But you know they live mainly on fish and berries and stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. There's a. Yeah, I could go on a bit. <laughs> about that time with Adam. Because I was just thinking the other day when, and I forgot to put it in my last video. Sorry, but yeah. he was. Um, you know when it says you must toil the earth now. You're gonna sweat and everything you got to toil the earth the rest of your days. You know yeah. that bit in the Bible? And um, it was it's probably not more of a case, what well, after he'd left God, he's no longer kind of just happy, you know, doing nothing in a sense. Yes. So he's got to occupy himself, got to be busy, got to have distractions. <clears throat> you know, what else could you do in that time, I suppose, apart from dig and... <laughs> <laughs> plant, plant stuff. I don't know, but yeah, a bit, yeah. bit of a loose theory that, but yeah, yeah. But uh, that that is a, a generous thing. So if I someday was you know sitting down and had nothing, to, or, or, you know, was agitated because I needed something to do, is that something that goes all the way back to that, or could possibly be so? Yeah, I I think it it is. You know. Because if you, if we're able to commune with God, and this is what's bothering me about teaching as well, I'm finding if I try and teach someone something, it makes me worse at it. I sort yes. of come back a step. <laughs> I've got to go, go through it again. Yeah. And in a sense, you know, if we can commune with God, our mother and father, that's our teacher. Yeah. That's what who we should be learning from. And on a soul, you know, it's all it's all going to be about the soul. Yeah. And I think, you know, I feel in my life from 40, I've, I've had kind of had enough playing with the body and all the things I could be doing in the body, in the flesh. Yeah. And, you know, I want more soul learning and I want to progress that infinite part of myself, the eternal part of myself. Yeah, that's what you really want to be working on because it's forever. Yeah. So if we were to continue to uh, say uh, work with the emotions that cause the body physical aging, could could it all be completed in the physical body? Um. Yeah. Why not? If your body hasn't got genetic injuries and that's why I, that's what I think about the world today so I feel that deep down every everyone is good every soul is good every, at the core of every soul is, is love a yeah. bit of hard light of love if you like so no one's going to be in hell forever that's just not going to happen but what we're doing is playing a part you know your soul entered your body and is playing the part for your life. But most people have these generational injuries, everyone really, and it's, sh it's showing how the world is when we decided not to go with God. And that's why it's kind of so screwed up the way it is. Yeah. Well, go, go in with, um, going with, going with, um, uh, education from God, I would find that maybe sometimes I think that there's, is there anything left on the earth for, you know, for, for to do like, you know, is it, what's the, what's the, what's the point of it if this, if, if this is this, if this is a direction? I don't think there is anything left on the earth in this way. Yeah, yeah. Um, except as a, as a like a nursery, 
you know, yeah. and I think the the souls that may want to come back to Earth and experience it are going to be ones who miscarriages, abortions, you know, or people who only live one year, or people who are disabled their whole life. You know, I think they're probably the only ones who would want to come back, and yeah. they wouldn't want to come back the way it is now, because there's no actual pristine nature left, really. I mean, yes. there's green fields, but it's it's either grazing land or arable land. Yeah. And fine, you've got hedges, hedgerows, and you've got the odd tiny bit of forest, but, you know, nature like, needs more space, I think. <laughs> yeah, certainly, yeah, certainly. To be allowed to do what nature does, and I, you know, I've left my gardens completely to grow, and... It could take 50, 100 years for land to get back. You know, if you think, it, it may take the trees that are growing in my garden now, they may have to grow, die, rot away before nature can be back how it was meant to be. Yes. Because we've, you know, decided what gets planted where and what trees we're using and stuff for, for a long time. Yeah, there was an interesting, well, an interesting program on, uh, I think it was, I'm not sure which channel it was on, but one of the, one of the nature channels where a program called Life After Earth, or Life After People, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> They're showing how the vegetation reclaimed the cities, how things have yeah. crumbled and, you know, the natural, the natural ways the, the earth can destroy what man has made and bring it back to its, 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 its form of glory, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. Yeah. When when you when you mentioned um, about souls coming back to earth, I always, I always wondered: is it restricted to, to the present, or, is, would there be a possibility of a soul, coming back to earth, but in a previous time? Um, I don't think you'd need to. I think if you wanted to visit a previous time, you've got all the souls who were living it in the day and you could just go and visit them and you'd you'd get a feel of what it was like you know you could satisfy your curiosity yeah completely i'd say you wouldn't be able to change anything yeah is that something like um... what would be the intention curiosity or Well, now that you've asked that question, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> the inten intentions are important, aren't they? Yeah. The There's always yeah, yeah. an intention. It's like, um, for me, it would be to feel what their emotion, it would be visiting, I'd be a, a tourist of emotions, to feel how they felt back then. Yeah, well, you, you can just connect with someone who lived in that time. Yeah. And it's you'd be able to do that right now if you wanted to, just by thinking about the time, thinking about the people who had to live in that time, and that would almost send out, you know, a, hello, is anyone out there who was in that, you know, and if someone's got some spare time, and if it was meant to be the way everything, synchronicities and everything, and you might yeah. feel someone. Yeah. And then if you felt them, you could, you could kind of tap into their memories like that or they share it with you type thing it's, it sounds like what you know the the, the the current practice of past life regression it sounds like kind of like that where you connect on a feeling base and you 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 can experience what's happening to them you know yeah i i've had you know there was someone who said to me once you know because when i believed in reincarnation and someone said to me um Oh yeah, I can I can help take you back there and and he said something like when was the last time you were happy and I just you know because you told me to say the first thing that comes into my head yeah which was fourteen ninety two or fourteen oh two and then suddenly I just saw this sort of woman holding a baby standing on like a veranda outside a wooden house looking over at the the views and the hills and I got a real feel and a sense of it. Yeah. 
So then, you know, because at the time I was thinking, so maybe that was my past life, maybe I was standing there next to her, or maybe I was the baby or something, you know? Yeah. And then, but since then, I, since then I can see how I just sort of, through curiosity, may have connected to a person. Because I, I can remember the, the woman, if you like. I can remember her face. And there was a feeling as well with it. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we now? <laughs> Do you... If you say you don't, you, you said you don't have... Um, just to just to mention, you don't have generational injuries, so... You're saying you don't? That's... Yeah, basically, I've come to believe that I don't have... Because he's saying, if you, if I'd had the generational injury, and I've, I've sort of felt the point where I could have blocked communi sort of feeling God yeah. if I'd believed that I didn't need God. If, yeah. if I was in any sort of error on that. And yes. I just feel, and I can think throughout my life when I was young, I just almost had this feeling that I'd never had that problem. That I'd never been blocked like that. So, in the fact that, well, <clears throat> what I claim that I can get in communion with God, I can't have that generational sin. It's not in me. Yeah, okay. So, I'm, if I'm like, I'm taking that viewpoint until someone or I realise I'm wrong, or someone proves me wrong in some way. Yeah. And I'm, I'm open minded. Because I don't want to be wrong. I don't want to be living my life thinking something which isn't true. I'm much rather, I was happy when I thought A.J. Miller was, you know, the one. And yeah. that he was going to do it. I was quite happy with that. In fact, I was relieved. <laughs> yeah. It was like, because a few months before that I'd made a video saying, am I Jesus? And in the video I was saying, no I'm not. And I talked about something I'd felt back when I was 19 and stuff. Um, and I still wouldn't use that word now. But so, in a sense, when he came along, it was like relief. I was like, phew, I'm off the hook. <laughs> but then as I was exploring his truths further, I was thinking, you know, I took on the core ones about God and what we are. Then you know some of the other things he was saying. I was like, no, this this ain't right. And trying to communicate with him, he won't have a bar of it. So uh, then it sort of came back on me. And well, what happened was is when I heard those truths about God, and and I'd given up cannabis, and two weeks later, sort of, I did have some, and suddenly I went higher than I'd ever been before. Because now the truth was in me, I didn't have this ceiling anymore. Yes. Sometimes I got high and I hit this ceiling and it was scary, it was horrible, hitting this ceiling. And so it released that. And then I thought, well, now I've got something I can, I can do. And, yeah. I, and I did, I was getting this feeling that, like, you're the one. And I didn't sort of take it on, first of all... And then six months later, felt a sense of it again, but it was like scary, it was big. I told my mum, I didn't tell anyone else, and I didn't fully embrace it then. Yeah. But then it was July the 8th, 2015, the feeling came again, and I was ready to embrace it. And I embraced it, and I went through the, the feeling of it. And yeah, it was like, <laughs> well, hey, you know, wonderful, and... But you wake up the next morning <laughs> and you're like, did that happen yesterday? <laughs> oh shit, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and then start telling people, family, and so it's, been a, it's been a real journey. Um, it's not, I wouldn't say it's finished. I feel like I'm having a little period of doubt at the moment. Like, it's, it's when you said in your e email, okay, so mate, something like that, I believe in you now. Yeah. That, like, like what? 
that's not supposed to happen. I, I prefer it when, you know, someone challenged me and I can take them on. Oh, what? Oh, shit. It's like, threw me in a sense. And then he's like, is he just saying that? So, you know, to appease me or whatever. And, you know, that well, comes in. It was interesting to me when you said, right, when you said, I, that guy, I was, I was still, I suppose, angry at mankind, we'll say, for telling me lies, you know? Not that they, not because they think it's true or not, that, that's irrelevant. You know, like you, like, sitting through history class in school with, with a book that's probably wrong, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, or twisted in some way. I, I, for me, belief was, was, you know, I know belief was my way of getting back at humanity, like not believing in them was my way of getting back at them to say, like, I'm not taking their shit anymore, you know, I'm not going to listen to anything they have to say. Yeah. And unfortunately, what that did, did that blocked me off, you know, entirely to... Everything. You know, when you said that I need to believe. So, um, I, when, I, when I said, okay, look, well, if I do need to believe, then I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, 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 if I want to be able to feel everybody, um, and I said, well, okay, well, let's, let's give it a shot, though. Um, so I felt a little bit of anger over the whole Santa Claus fiasco, um, you know. Um, what I was told is, you know, what's good and what's bad for me and all these other things. And it was, um, it was an easy process for me to go through. And I said, and then I was thinking, of, well, well, what was the point of me doing this again? I said, well, okay, well, we see what's... And I then was thinking of, what's, what, what is Stephen doing now? Where, where, what were you doing that moment, you know? And I kind of imagine you were just walking home from somewhere. And like I said, I felt that, I said, well, there he is. But I can only feel, I think I can only feel from Stephen what, what I can feel from myself. So anything I haven't gone through yet, gone through the process of yet, you know, I couldn't feel stuff from you that I haven't got. So I didn't feel confronted. But I felt I got like an image of a guard around you, like a wall of some kind. Um, and I was saying, oh, okay, <laughs> so this belief isn't so bad after all, you know, believing in people isn't such a bad thing to do. But for me, that was just like, it was for me, it was just like hitting a switch, switching belief back on. Um, so that's what I said, okay, I believe you, I believe you now, but I can't, you know, am I blocking some, I'm, I'm probably, I feel that I might be filtering some of the information about you. Yeah, you might be getting something. Well, it's what, you know, from what you've just said now, like, so you got to this point where you sort of hated people for, you know, the lies and stuff. So you, you in a sense, cut off believing other people. And you decided, yeah. the only thing I'm going to believe in is what I know from my own experience. Yes. And I guess so, yeah. Yeah. I think that's quite good and quite sensible. And, um, you know, you believe in God, don't you? I do, yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, why I say belief is essential, you know, belief is the starting point. It's like, if you wanted to feel God, you're obviously going to need to believe in God, and now, you, now you're starting. It's yeah. like, like a leap, like leap of faith. Yeah. But I wonder, I wonder if you're still, well, like, because you say about the comf comfort zone. Yes. You know, and I think belief in God does require a leap of faith. Yeah. And would you say you've done that? In, in certain aspects of my life, yes, but not as with the intention of, of feeling God in the entirety. Um, I'm, I would say, just from what you're saying there, I would say that I'm only really concerned at the moment with my own experience. So to feel other people's experience would be a humongous leap. Yeah. You know. Um, but if no, you want to know, if you want to know if I'm for real... It's like, okay, so you can believe that, you know, if you sit down another time and you believe that I'm just, 
mad or what, making it up, just a bit, you know, out there. And if you get a feeling from that, and then you can say, right, for the next half an hour, I'm going to believe that he, he is the one. This, you know, he is the one that God has decided, blah, blah, blah. And just f for half an hour. And if you felt something, if you felt God go, Brum, yes, it's true, then you would know something. That would be first-hand experience, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and as, as and like in those videos that I recommended to you, man, um, uh, Marshall, the, the mechanism of opening myself to believe something, I, I had to look at a time in my life when I had to consider when did I, when did I close that? So the, the, the actual, the, the, the action of opening myself up, you know, that's it. That is the, I suppose, I, I, I can only really call it the mechanism of, of opening up myself to, to believing something. Um, I, I was in a meditation, I, I was thinking, who can I have to come help me with this particular issue? And the first thing I said to myself is, no, no, don't, don't call God. Or as if I was being told, don't call God, he's too powerful. Leave him alone, you know. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'm happy to go with that, you know. <laughs> and that's wrong, by the way. But I know, I just took it for granted. I just said, okay, well, you know, it's too powerful. No, 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 I couldn't handle that right now, you know. So, I don't know, was that, was that, it sounds like more of an external suggestion to my, to my head, you know, from, from somewhere else. Um, but. And a negative one. A def yeah, definitely a negative one. Definitely negative one, but I always find that if when I, when I, for me to, you know, to, even to ask God, even to ask God say about you, saying, you know, just as you said, to sit down and choose to believe it for a while and see what happens. Um, I wonder is, uh, what am I trying to say? Yeah, it seems, seems like something that I, I instantly forget about and I get distracted. Yeah. So I'm wondering, was there... Was there a time when I when I chose to really really believe something, you know? And I'm not saying something as trivial as, oh, we're going for ice cream and we end up not going, you know? It's not something that that trivial, but something where I really really wanted to believe in something, and you know, and not that it didn't happen, but it was just kind of turned on its head, or something happened to me because I opened my belief, and I may have gotten trouble for it. So it's not something that I, I can I can remember right now um, I mean for I example a consequence to it yeah I mean for example parents will encourage their children to believe in Father Christmas yeah knowing that one day that belief is going to be taken away yeah they're going to find out it's not real yeah and you know it's probably why a lot of people put off believing in God yeah it's a it's a it's, it's a new if it is, if that is what's happening, then it uh, it's well, lousy, but it's ingenious, you know. And I just wanted to, because uh, you were talking about opening up. Yeah. I think you know. My first good encounter with God probably was in my teens, and I lay in bed, and I thought, you know, God knows everything about me. God yeah. knows absolutely everything I do. There's no hiding it from God. Yeah. And so I just, you know, then I consciously sort of open myself up to God, if you like. Yeah. My, what I thought of it at the time, but it was a feeling. But, you know, and I, f I felt like I had this sort of judgment upon me where I suddenly remembered all my bad points. And I thought, oh, I'm a horrible person during that. <laughs> but then I remembered my good points as well. And it was like, oh, yeah, now I'm redeemed. Yeah. And it was like the bad points, you know, the bad parts of you just get burnt up at the end. They yeah. they don't live forever, but your good points they they do. <laughs> so you are you say now that you're you are you're you're built on all your good points now. <clears throat> well, so so since that point, then I, you know, I still made errors after that. Yeah. And 
you know, and then maybe a few years later I had another little judgment period. But it was after that that I realised that everyone will judge themselves. Yeah. You know, and that judgment day will come for everyone. Maybe when you die, you may do it before. But you basically, you do judge yourself. You just see everything. You know, it's weird. Like, I think when, when you get in contact with God, you do, you do see everything. It yeah. all becomes clear. Yeah. It's, like I found that when, if I was to say that it, I did feel God at one stage a couple of years ago, um, when I was 33, um, I, I instantly wanted to suppress it because I, whatever it was, it felt way, way too powerful. And for the, for the reason that I, I was convinced that, um, someone was going to steal this feeling out of me <laughs> and I got really, really paranoid. <laughs> so once I really, after a couple of days, I was saying, you know, that, that can't happen. No one can steal it from me, you mm -hmm. know, because I was, I was, I felt greedy with that feeling, you know, <laughs> um, and afterwards I, I, I felt like I, I was going mad. I, I, I said, just know that person has been sneaky to me and I, and, but they were not, there was no way they were consciously aware of what they were doing because it was probably in their training, you know. Um, Sorry, I lost you there. What? Yeah, and the you felt I, I find, like you started nutshell, feeling I God. You started feeling God. Yeah. And then it was too powerful. Got a bit paranoid, and then you feel there was someone else putting you off. I I. I kind of realized the situation I was in, I suppose, because when I was, when I was, when I was sitting at home on the couch, I wasn't engaged in the world really as such. Yeah. But when I went outside the house and I went engaged in what I was doing around, you know, in my life. Yeah. Then I could feel the, I could feel the, you know, the, the strings attached to my hands and legs and how I was, how I was accommodating, you know, how, I, how accommodating I was being to the demands of others and the expectations of others. Well, what, you know, like you say, what, when you're sitting on the couch, not really in the world, Yeah. you know, that is a much truer, much from yourself perspective. Yeah. When you go out on the street, you know, and you walk past someone, their belief system affects yours. So that's when you go, to, that's when you say to yourself, it wasn't God. What am I? I'm <laughs> fooling myself, you know. Yeah. Because, you know, the majority of people don't believe, or they believe something wrong about God, you know, and everything taints it. You know, I've had to. Yeah. I've, I've had oh, to it's a difference rate between the two, so. Well, you know that there's. So some days you, you know, we say we just call them for the argument's we call them good days and bad days, right? And the bad days, I'd be sitting at home thinking, why am I thinking about this stuff? I don't believe this stuff, you know. Um, is there a way to, to know what, who I am at a core, at a core, my core self, and, you know, who is someone else in their entirety? Without, without coming home and taking on their feelings and then trying to process something that doesn't belong to me. Well, they're probably just like you. But I, I think one thing with you sort of touching on sort of self judgment here. Yeah. And I think a really helpful thing to do is think, well, God designed the universe, God made all of us, God set this whole thing up. So surely whatever is whatever has happened was meant to be in a sense. Was yeah. how God knew it would happen. And yeah. and we will progress, you know, we will progress as we ought to in a sense like watching a flower bloom you know if you keep watching it, it doesn't seem like it's happening when you forget about it for a bit and then go and check it later lo and behold it's doing its thing and I think our I think our soul progression is much like that as well yeah it you know the weight isn't all on one it's not e you know not even on me I've just got a do my bit, you know, we've all got a purpose, 
and you you you've talked a lot about jealousy and envy. Yeah. And it might help you the real a realization I had had if you like while well, I was thinking, you know, if I'm at the if I'm at the top of the tree at the moment, you know, at some point in the future I'm going to be at the bottom of the tree. Yeah. Because all those in a lower state now are going to overtake me. Yeah. So you're going to overtake me. And even the most wicked person is going to overtake me. Because, and I can see how that makes sense. If you think, if you spent 2,000 years being wicked and you're in a really low state. When you decide to go with God and you start to become more loving. You're going to go leaps and bounds. And you're really going to learn stuff that someone who's never been that low, really, yeah. isn't going to be able to comprehend. Yeah. So I think, you know, we're all equal in the sight of the Lord, God. I don't know why I said Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're all equal children. We're different. We're all unique. And that makes us all special. And so, yeah, there's like no no problem there with... You know, there's no, I don't think, you know, we have a lot of this hierarchy in society, don't we? Yes. And that's not involved on the soul level. There isn't, like, AJ and his club aren't going to be, you know, the ones that we're learning from forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, sort of how they sort of put it across a bit, the 14 and everything. You know, yeah. like this super hit squad, <laughs> superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's all gonna get evened out. It's all gonna go. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I, 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 I can understand that. So that's a bit depressing for me, in a way. Can you see yeah. how that is? Absolutely, yeah. Because uh, it's, it's. But I'm, I'm actually now that you mention it, I'm actually you know I feel okay about it that, you know that I can I can see it for what it is, but not, without automatically putting the association on it, the association of a hierarchy on it. Um, because everyone is pretty much the, the you know the expert of what they're all doing at themselves in their own life, you know. And no one can be better at someone else's life. <laughs> mm. So I, I suppose I can see I, I did I always had this, you know, it's not fair, you know. Why do I have to do this? It's not fair, it's not fair, it's not fair. But that doesn't seem to be there anymore. Um, I, I don't know why, because usually I would feel that's not fair. You know, if, if, if we were all getting dinner and if someone had a few more peas than me, then I used to think that's not fair, you know. <laughs> so I, it's not really that way anymore. I'd be trying to half an omelette exactly down the center, and, you know, I wouldn't go so far as to weigh both sides, you know. But, <laughs> but uh, this... Um, it probably only needs to happen once that you get left out. Yeah. And if you suppress that feeling, like AJ is right in saying, the law of attraction will keep bringing those events until you feel the feeling. Yeah. And that's just about God, you know, we've got these souls and here we are to experience them. And you just have, you know, if we had said at the beginning of our life, right, you just have to experience, you know, umpteen different negative emotions and umpteen different positive emotions and then you'll be ready for stage two. Yeah. That'd be a lot simpler, wouldn't it? Yeah. We'd get I there guess, a lot um, quicker. Nothing like a... Would you... Would you say that the law of attraction brings it kind of in, a, in, a, in the form maybe of a, you know, something like a coin toss that brings you up a positive one, then it brings you a negative. It could be five negatives in a row, then it could be eight positives in a row. Or... You know, I think God, each of our personalities are different. Yeah. So some people might get it one each. Some people might get lots in a row and then lots in a row. And, and it's all catered for our personality, I'd say. God knows yeah. exactly what we're capable of. Like sometimes when I'm meditating, I'm thinking I'm not quite getting it now at this moment you know and I just think well God knows when how my will is when I've got the will to go through with something <laughs> you know you yeah. kind of 
it's going with the flow, isn't it, really? But it's no, well, <laughs> anything anti-stress is good. Yeah, yeah. Being calm is good. Yeah. God is always calm. Quite often I feel God, the first thing I was like, how, you know, so I'm like, how are you, God? I'm not asking, but I'm sort of trying to feel how God is. And obviously yeah. I know God is always calm, cool and awesome. <laughs> You know, yeah. it's like, it's, it's good, because then it reminds me to be calm. Yeah. So what, is, what's the, what, what do you feel is your next step, so? Well, at the moment, I'm sort of, like I say, I'm running with this if I'm potentially being a vessel for God to remove the generational sin from the DNA yeah. of man. You're going to make some business cards. <laughs> long, <laughs> long sentence. <laughs> No, well, it's it's um it's I do talk about it in the video I made it just recently. Of course, yeah. The, the last one you haven't watched, but um, <clears throat> you're gonna you know have a watch and leave a comment if you like. But it's it's a different feeling during meditation, and it what I've what I've worked out, and that's why I said belief is so important. So you're trying to work something out. You get something happen to you. And because in God's, you know, God's plan is everything's awesome. So the truth is brilliant. And when you tap into it, you feel how brilliant it all is. It's all perfect. Yeah. It is all perfect for us. It's hard to believe that though, isn't it? It, it is. It's, it's, you can't it's, force it's, yourself either. Like so, the, yeah, sorry, the, the, what comes straight into my mind is... Um, when when you when you say that about God, right? I I imagine myself like being being a child, but being my my age now, and looking into a sweet like looking into a sweet shop for the first time, but not having any money, and I see all the wonderful things about God, and think, well, I can't have those, and I'm you know that's 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 just uh, I suppose that's just uh, something that's just just been confronted with me you know, just yeah well that's a good that's a good example of a false belief yeah okay so you've got no money at this point you're looking in the sweet shop but that's you know have the faith God will provide God will put 30 pence in your pocket at some stage and you'll be able to go and sample one of the sweets yeah so it's it's a good example how false belief Anything negative, anything causing fear, is often a false belief. Yeah. That that prevents you, if you like, going forward. But you will. You'll you know you'll 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 make progress. Mm. As sure as you're breathing in, thousand times a day, you know you will be making progress. Yeah. God yeah. God works at what twenty three million times a second. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, when I've been feeling God, and I, at the beginning, you know, I would get, <clears throat> there would be spirits trying to trick me a lot. Yeah. Come and give me the feeling that they're God, or that I'm God, or... And why, you know, I said I felt God here in my temples. And there was one time, only one time, when something else got in there, and it wasn't God. Yeah. And I could tell by the frequency. And also I kept checking with my heart. But God's frequency is so smooth, in a sense. Like, other spirits have different frequencies, and they're a bit, you know, you can almost, you can sense there's a frequency there. But it's yeah. like God's is so fast, so smooth, so pure, and it was it's easily distinguishable compared, <laughs> compared yeah. to anyone else who might be a bit crackly or a bit fuzzy, you know. Yeah. Okay. Have Perhaps, you had any 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 particular spirits come help you? Well, I when you know first listening to AJ and hearing that I've got a guide. Yeah. Um, there, there was. I did get this sense of a guide, and I got a sense that she was a woman. And I, yeah. and I tried to sort of tap into it. And I, whether this is true or not, I did get a feeling of that she died in the during the World War Two, 
she was a nurse and it was quite possible that she had been bombed and it's quite possible she was German but also I got a feeling that there was a rapport between me and her with this sort of you know truth seeking and everything else yeah but I did drop her quite quickly because I was communing with God yeah so to me it was like no offence but you know if I can <laughs> learn from God I'll, le I'll learn from God yeah. So and that, and if you like, yeah, you know, you would, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, have you? What's I gonna say now? Yeah. So you're, you're. But there is someone else as well. There is a, there is a my granddad's first son who died when he was three. He had some sort of serious problem. He was a twin as well, and the girl died when she was just a few weeks. But this guy, Christopher, he lived until he was three. And I've been told by a medium that he was standing behind me. And I was, at that time, I was definitely using him for help. And yeah. I, I was trying the automatic writing as well at the time. Yeah. I was just going to ask you about that, actually. That's, that's, that's bizarre. Anyway, the, um, did you ever read, or did you see, or... Hear of uh, Neil Don Walsh with the conversations with God? No, I haven't heard Neil okay, Donaldson. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, no, I, 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 I got them from an audio book because I so Neil Don Walsh would be saying to himself. Um, I just want to mention that because it's um, it seems like one of these people who hit rock bottom and yeah. had nothing else but talking to God, but he used a. Uh, it was automatic writing. Used. Right. Okay. Yeah, and um, I think there's several books out there, but it's something. It's it's definitely an interesting an interesting lesson, like. But um, the, with the with the automatic writing, how how do you just do you still use that now or? No, because I feel it was it was fifty fifty. You know, I couldn't trust it at all. Yeah. I could not okay. trust it. Yeah, and did your did your handwriting change, or was there anything noticeable, or? Um, no, I wouldn't say I was. I didn't probably didn't do it enough to be very good at it for a start. Yeah. The first time, I just got this feeling: close your laptop and get a plain piece of paper. Yeah. And. And yeah, I believe it was throwing me. What I wrote down was throwing me off the path. So. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I did it a few times, and there may have been some truths in there. I did yeah. feel something while I was doing it, so I did definitely feel it was spirit led. Yeah. But you can't I couldn't trust the spirit. Yeah, okay. That's fair enough. Because yeah. it was yeah. it, at the time I really wanted to know who my soulmate was. And well as far as I know, it pointed me in the wrong direction. <laughs> so. Okay. <laughs> but I'm it did, yeah, I hadn't an, analysed that much, but the person I contacted first was an ex-girlfriend. And there was some emotion there that I hadn't felt, that I'd suppressed. And yeah. I did have a good cry when, when I sort of, I went and looked at her Facebook, I looked at the things she'd been posting, you know, and it, it, it did sort of trigger some emotion. So, so in a sense, it's not a bad thing, so... Yeah, but no, I've left the automatic writing. But I do believe, I do believe, you know, they're like Paget. I haven't read them all yet, but I've read a good yeah. deal of them. And I think... Yeah, I started reading um, uh, the first book. Um, it's True the Mist, I think, is the first book, is it? Yeah, have you not read them yet? I started reading that, and um, then I heard AJ say in a, in a, in a, in a presentation... He said, "Oh, not not everyone gets goes gets. It's not that simple for everybody." And I so I just put it down again, <laughs> and I right. didn't read it anymore. Now, you know. Right. Well, funnily uh, enough, I read the middle one first. Life and Elysium. Yeah. And I still think that's the best one. And when I read through the mists, I think I found the <laughs> beginning bit a bit, a bit weird. Didn't really, <laughs> didn't really quite get all of it. Um, it's quite hard to read, I think. 
you got but there's some really good bits and you, yeah I, like, I really like all three books definitely really enjoyed reading them yeah good okay hmm. so you you were saying you, what did you say is your next step so oh yeah we didn't get around to it did we yeah. <laughs> so well, it's uh, so the next step is to feel like I feel like I've felt some. If I write and I've been a vessel for God removing generational sin from the DNA of man, yeah. Then then I will be continuing with that, and I hope to get to you know Lamechs and Cains and Adams. I feel like that would be at the end. Yeah. Like I say, at the moment, I'm in a bit of a doubting period, <laughs> yeah. so I'm not that confident, and I don't know how how it would manifest. You know, if um, uh, cells die, don't they, in our bodies? Yes. And every seven years, we're a completely new person physically. Yeah. Every cell has died and renewed. So, you know, it could take seven years to manifest itself. Yeah. In, in other people, if if it's even happening at all. Yeah. Okay. But so I'm going to see how that goes anyway. Because I would have, I would have. It is quite exhausting, I would say. Yeah. Like when I think of um, the next thing that I need to to do, essentially, I would imagine in my mind, you know, all the relevant experience, even if it's something, especially when it's something I don't know what it's going to be about, I don't know what I'm going to do when I don't sure. know Sure, that's when you're in the in-between or you're at the beginning of something, you know, for me, I feel like I'm in the middle of something. Yeah. But okay. you go on, when, um, all your relevant experience. Yeah, how much of, how much of your experience since birth, um, can help you with this next step? Well, I feel that everything that's happened in your life is is there for you to work it out. Yeah. You know, it, it's sort of designed that way. So if you think, like, it's one of your greatest possessions is all your previous experiences. Yeah. Above anything else. Because I, I would have thought of it as... The experience, all my experiences, that weren't influenced by someone else, where no one had their ha hand in it. You know, if you're trying to achieve something and someone comes in and finishes it for you, you know, could that be counted as, as, as an experience? Well, yeah, because then you experience how it would have been better if you would have finished it yourself. So then you can think, well, next time I'll say, no thanks. I want to yeah. finish this myself. Yeah. Which kids say all the time. <laughs> kids are brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> I love kids. Yeah. I heard this kid the other day scream at his... Well, scream at Mum, why didn't you listen to me? You know, like... Because now he was right and they had to sort it out. And, you know, he's like... Why didn't you listen to me? You know, why couldn't you just listen to me? I was right. You know, and that... That sort of yeah. frustration, but it was real from the heart, you know? Yeah. <laughs> why Why didn't you listen to me? Because all adults think kids are dumb. That's, that's the answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> yeah, very good. Okay, so you, you, you reckon that um, to, to, to use that uh, corny inf in interview stage, where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> Oh God, yeah, no, it's uh, it's where do I see the world? Yeah. You know. Part of me, if an asteroid came and. You know, like Isaiah's, you know, Isaiah in the Bible predicts the whole world total destruction. Yeah. I kind of um, <clears throat> that seems appealing sometimes. <laughs> you know, and then and nature can just start again, but. Yeah. Obviously, the survival period would be pretty tough, and does does God need to get rid of some of the population, or just stop them having babies? Uh, Zika. Yeah. Um. So, where I see my, I to be honest, 
For myself, I see progression to be quite slow and steady from now on. I actually feel like I've done, perhaps apart from this last bit, what well, might be the last bit, what I feel I'm in the middle of now, apart yeah. from that to do, I feel like I feel like I'm almost done with progression now. And it's, you know, <laughs> everybody else. But because I've really, you know, I really enjoy learning. Yeah. And I've over the last couple of years there's definitely been some hard bits, but I've really enjoyed it. And I look back and I think, wow, has it only been 2 years? And I <laughs> I, I love that feeling in life when you when you've been doing something it seems like it's gone pretty quick, but when you look back, you feel like you've done a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I guess it does. So, what's the, how, how, can, how can others benefit from, from, from your soul? Well, if it, you know, if it doesn't look like the YouTube videos are going to go viral. Yeah. If anything, there'll just be a bit of historical you know, check up, you know, it's all it's all there, what I feel I've been going through. And that yeah. every, everything is on the soul level. Yeah, okay. And so when I'm meditating and I'm feeling God really strongly, I do feel I'm almost like bringing God into this dimension. In a, yeah. And that is doing something. That's why I sort of started to get on the, with the, you know how water is supposed to be all connected? Have you ever heard that before? I haven't, I, I don't know if it's on a quantum level. And but, you know, and then in, in, in our genes. So this is theory, I don't know for sure. But so I feel like we've all, you know, we like, why is it in the Paget messages, the spirits are saying to him, wow, your prayers are really working for us up here in the spirit world. You know, please pray for me because for some reason it's really working. There's some sort of power that we have on earth as physical beings. Some, you know, something we're unaware of and, you know, why God would need a Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Or does God need a Christ? That's still an open question, you know, and I might, might be wrong. But so if God needs a Christ, he needs, you know, there is some reason why that that physical body we have has a capability. And is it, you know, we're all connected genetically and, well, yeah, I don't know, it gets a bit hard to describe. Yeah, well, um, I guess God would, God would, would, would need... Um... A, a a representative of a represent a representative in each, you know, sphere or layer, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. That possesses, or is a representation of things to come. Someone who is slightly more progressed, and that makes sense to me because how else would, you know, where where else would we find, an example of progression? Yeah, or like someone you can depend on to yeah. be telling you what God says. Yeah. But is that, could that all be happening on a soul level? So in a sense, almost without people's awareness of it. If you think in Jesus' time, in Yeshua's time, you know, surely all the world hadn't heard of him. But he, I mean, he claims, doesn't he? He says that when someone's at one with God on earth, it has amazing effects. Yeah. There's like, there's a, a Rupert Sheldrake talks of a similar thing that, that was achieved in experiments where they trained monkeys in Australia to do some a certain thing and then automatically the monkeys in England were able to do the same thing. Wow. They already actually knew the learning. And of course, he was, um, you know, and his, his books, I think, were to use as paperweights, you know, like everyone else who had <laughs> a, a suggestion of, of a sort. Um, but the, no, that's, um, that's uh, when you say, like, when you said before that the first 
will be last and the last will be first. That if someone on earth um, is is praying for someone up in the spirit world, then it makes sense if they're if they are you know maybe the person who's going to progress past them, which would make their prayer. It makes sense to me that their the prayers of someone on earth could be as important as you know someone who has actually already progressed. Well, I, I, I don't know if you've sort of misinterpreted what I was trying to say. I was just trying to say the fact that someone's still got a physical body yeah. has some extra... Like, the spirits in the spirit world are lacking something because they don't have a physical body. Yeah, I think I, 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 think I automatically try to not hear that from you, actually. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, and you know, I just went out the question when you said you misinterpreted. I said, "Oh yeah, okay." No, I deliberately misinterpreted. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because I didn't want to hear it. Because <laughs> I wanted to say, "Right, let's let's just check out of this hotel and go to the better one." Like. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. So you know, I'm happy to 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 be on the earth plane for a while. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. I mean, um, that that might have something to do with the, your. Your, your your belief about the spirit world yeah you know you might be wanting it to be some you know to have something more than what it has got yeah yeah absolutely yeah yeah now that's that's probably the next thing I can look into I think because I think the spirit world is more of a and also when I talked about dimensions you then said planes and then you think of spheres and you yeah. think of all of AJ's spheres. Yeah. So I think of this physical dimension as one dimension, the spirit dimension as another dimension. No matter which sphere you're on, I'm just seeing that yeah. as one dimension. And then the dimension where our souls and where God is, as the main and dominant dimension. Yeah. Like you said, again, doesn't it? It comes down to, you know, we can't second guess every word we say. What does yeah. this person think it is, and what does this person think it is? It would be good, wouldn't it, if we get onto an even keel where everyone understands <laughs> the <truth. Yeah. laughs> just the truth of it. It's such a place it would be great. You you couldn't possibly hate anyone if that always <laughs> understands you. You know, so mm. that would be a great place. Well, like like I see that it seems to me that you know you you have you say that. You know, you doubt your videos, whatever, probably go viral, but, you know, that your YouTube space, you created yourself and you put up a lot of videos that, you know, and you, you know, you said in some videos that you were wrong on previous videos. So it's, you know, I think it's, a, you, you, you've, you've made yourself very transparent by putting up all those videos. Yeah. And you are, you have created the space and it's, you know, you don't. I don't find I don't feel a deception from you, and I did feel I don't feel that you're unapproachable either. You know, so I said you said, you know, yeah, I'll have a discussion with you. Let's let's you know, I'll 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 come in. You know, and I don't, you know, I don't feel any manipulation or anything by you. So, um, I think that maybe you have, you know, you've already started, you do you, you've already started your next step. Yeah, I mean, I might find out I'm wrong, and yeah, but well, like it's just but I'll go with it. That's what I mean. I'll say I'll take a I'll take something on, yeah. and I'll run with it for a bit. Yeah, and I'll go with it. If it grinds me into the ground, and then I'll give up and go, okay, I'm wrong. <laughs> but so far, so far, I've been getting to a next stage. Yeah, so far it's been working for me. So. I'm gonna yeah, you, you, like you have that, um, that, you know, that, I, I wouldn't use the word comfort, but that, you know, that the ease of moving along from one thing to the next thing, you know, you don't get overly frustrated and start tearing the house apart when, when something doesn't work, you know. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I've been wrong most of my life about things. <laughs> it's like Winston Churchill said. Go from one failure to the next without losing enthusiasm. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> but it seems to be getting better. <laughs> yeah, like, I like I can. That's 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 one thing I I, I suppose the the most positive thing I I found in the last few years was that no matter even if I'm having the worst day of my life, I still feel enthusiastic about it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's not a bit strange, isn't it? <laughs> Well, it's, 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 you'd be grateful, aren't you? You're grateful. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's taking, think, allowing all aspects to come in. Like. You know, and everyone's, everyone's compensated for things, so it's, it's pointless comparing yourself to someone who's disabled. You don't know what spirit, what nighttime dreams they're having. They might be yeah. in euphoria all night long. Yeah. You know? And then have to put up with their shit during the day and then <laughs> back to sleep and woo, we're in euphoria again. And yeah. then and and the rich people who are living it up during the day go to sleep are in absolute hell all night. Yeah. You don't know, do you? Yeah. Those that do sleep. <laughs> well, yeah. 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 So I think I can I can How's your sleep? I think it's it's I have to look back at how it was over the last few years, and that's how I kind of judge it. But um, I, I take it you're an alarm clock person. I, I'm well. Work in the morning. Work in the morning. Like I generally, I I do need the alarm clock, but um, yeah, I do work in the morning. Um, I found that the the dreams are getting, you know, the area is getting slightly brighter. But I do have very, my, my dreams have become, they have changed, but now they're extremely repetitive. Oh, so, so you're not yeah, listening then, then Dara. Hmm? You're not listening then. No, I'm not, no. He's having to tell you <laughs> over and over again. Yeah. There's something. <laughs> yeah, and it's, 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 like it's, always, it's always generally that it's people in my personal space. That's, 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 the, that's the lesson, like. Um, but I don't know what to do with it. You know, should I just hang around in big crowds all day or, you know, just you know, go into Tesco on a Friday night, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, they're your dreams, you know. Yeah. And I count that, you know, our dreams are like part of our first-hand experience, part of our possessions. Yeah. There are dreams for us. Like, so what, 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 is it okay to ask you what might that be? What? Like that, having dreams where there's people in my personal space and they won't leave, and I'm <clears throat> freaking out about them being in my space. Um, well, have you been honest with them and said, you know, I want you to leave? No, I, I want to. I want to do that. But See? when I go into the dream, the terror no, is there. No, in real life. Yeah, so in real life. Oh, in real life? Oh, I never thought of that. <laughs> yeah, do it in real life first and then, yeah. Well, it's like, yeah, your dream's telling you stuff to do in real life, yeah. Yeah. Like, because okay. not every, because remember, AJ even said, like, there are dreams you have and then there's spirit life existence. Yeah. So, you know, when you have a dream, it's almost like the letter coming through the letterbox telling you you've won a million pounds. Yeah. You know, it's kind of from God in a sense. What happens in your life, we don't we don't have control over it. So those dreams are like, I would say, you know, a message from God or your own soul. And if they're repetitive, it's definitely because you're not listening. <laughs> you're yeah. not you're not you haven't worked it out yet, or if you have, you haven't acted on it possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay. Well, we hit the hour and a half mark again. Okay. It seems to yeah. be the, the, a normal, a good sort of time to leave yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it seems to work, yeah. <laughs> Until next time, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Cheers, mate. And hopefully it recorded and, uh, yeah. All right? Yeah. Speak soon. All right. Okay. Take care. Bye, Dara. Good. Bye. Yeah. <clears throat>